Hi, I'm Seamus Cram, and I'm an associate in the construction department at Walker Morris. My training video today is going to be on the adjudication enforcement process. So firstly, what is adjudication enforcement and in what circumstances is it necessary? Well, as discussed in the prior training video in this series, parties to a construction contract have a statutory right to refer disputes arising under that contract to adjudication. In practice, however, a party might obtain a successful outcome as adjudication only to find that the opposing party fails to comply with the adjudicated decision. This might involve the opposing party choosing to only partially comply with the decision or simply ignoring it altogether. In this type of scenario, the party which has been successful at adjudication may decide to commence inf adjudication enforcement proceedings in the Technology and Construction Division of the High Court. The purpose of the enforcement application would usually be to obtain a court order ordering that the adjudicated decision is enforced in its entirety. Where the adjudication award determines that a monetary sum is payable, then the enforcing court judgments will confirm that the adjudication award is owed as a debt. While well, the court reiterated a number of general principles regarding adjudication enforcement in the 2005 case between Carillion Construction Limited and Devonport Royal Dockyard Limited, the judgment contained the following three points. Firstly, the Court of Appeal has repeatedly emphasised that adjudicated decisions must be enforced, even if they result from errors of procedure, fact or law. Secondly, where an adjudicator has acted in excess of his jurisdiction or in serious breach of the rules of natural justice, the court will not enforce the decision. Thirdly, the objective which underlies the Act and the statutory scheme requires the courts to respect and enforce the adjudicator's decision unless it is plain that the question which he has decided was not the question referred to him or the manner in which he has gone about his task is obviously unfair. It should only be in rare circumstances that the courts will interfere with the decision of an adjudicator. These principles have been repeatedly emphasised in the courts and can be summarised as follows. Firstly, a party may seek to enforce an adjudicator's award, even where that decision contains errors of fact or law. Secondly, in order to resist enforcement, a party must establish that the adjudicator acted in excess of his or her jurisdiction or that the rules of natural justice were seriously breached in the course of the adjudication. And thirdly, the general approach of the courts is to enforce adjudicator's decisions and it will only be in rare circumstances that the courts will decline to do so. While well, the court will prioritise lists and adjudication enforcement hearings, we review to disposing of them quickly, and we usually expect to receive a hearing within two to three months of issuing a claim in the High Court. Typically, judgment is issued on the day of the enforcement hearing. While well, the general rule in civil litigation is that the losing party pays the costs of the winning party. This rule also applies to adjudication enforcement hearings. Where the court determines that the party has failed to comply with an adjudicated decision without good reason, then the usual approach will be to award costs on the indemnity basis. The court has adopted this approach in order to discourage parties from resisting adjudication enforcement decisions other than in circumstances where a genuine natural justice or jurisdictional challenge can be made out. As a rule of thumb, usually around 70% of legal costs are recoverable in the event of obtaining a successful judgment. Well, as discussed, ordinarily the court will only decline to enforce an adjudicated decision in circumstances where a valid jurisdictional or natural justice objection can be made out. Otherwise, the adjudicated decision will very likely be enforced regardless of how many factual or legal errors the adjudicator has made in reaching their decision. So how does a party which has lost an adjudication protect its position in circumstances where it strongly disagrees with the adjudicator's award? Well, the court provided express guidance on this point in the recent adjudication enforcement application brought by John Graham Construction Limited against Technicas Reuniatdas UK Limited. At paragraph 28 of his judgment, Mr. Justice Morris stated, the adjudication procedure does not involve the final determination of anybody's rights. In the overwhelming majority of cases, if the losing party does not accept the adjudicator's decision as correct in fact or law, the proper course is to pay the amount it is ordered to pay by the adjudicator and then to take legal or arbitration proceedings to establish the true position. The guidance outlined by the court in this case is sometimes described as pay now and argue later. So a party which disagrees with the substance of an adjudicator's decision should therefore ordinarily comply with that decision and make payments of any sums awarded unless a jurisdictional or natural justice challenge can be established. At the same time, 
that party should seek legal advice on potential grounds to commence a subsequent legal action, such as a further adjudication or court proceedings, to obtain a final determination of the relevant dispute. Ordinarily, a future court will have authority to award repayments of any sums wrongly awarded under a prior adjudication. While this route is far from ideal for those who have received a bad adjudication decision, it does at least provide some potential route to correct the outcome in circumstances where an adjudicator has reached a bad, albeit enforceable, decision. So to recap, we've discussed what adjudication and enforcement proceedings are, in what circumstances the court will either enforce an adjudication award or decline to do so, the practical process by which adjudication enforcement occurs, um, and what to do practically if you receive a bad adjudication decision but it, which is nevertheless enforceable. For more information, please don't hesitate to contact either myself or my colleagues in the construction department of Walker Morris. I hope this training video has been useful.